Hello. So in this video, I'm going to summarize what we did in this in these four weeks. First of all, what we had the um, uh, the flow in the understanding of the systems and how the controller is applied on it. We categorized the system in dynamical systems and non-dynamical systems. We understood that the control problem is for the dynamical systems. And then we looked into, okay, categorizing it into linear and nonlinear system, the entire classical theory, the transfer function theory sits on LTI system, linear time invariant systems. Uh, whereas the nonlinear systems theory also has some um, understanding, requires some understanding of the linear systems, uh, the control of the linear systems. Uh, we can always consider operating system, op sorry, operating range for, a non, for controlling the nonlinear system and possibility is that uh, within that operating range, the nonlinear system uh, behavior is actually pretty much linear and so look forward for uh, resorting to the LTI methods, LTI system methods itself for controlling the system. We also looked into uh, multiple input and multiple output systems, um, large scale systems which has um, very high number, number of uh, uh, states and so on. In all this, the practical approach, the emphasis all was on simplifying the model or limit the operating range and then de design the PID control. The idea here is to always consider uh, simplistic methods because finally these simplistic methods are very easy to implement, the first point. Uh, the second is when these are easy to implement, its understanding is also very, uh, very can be easily understood uh, and then we would be able to tune these control parameters very easily and how the control parameter tuning is, will the, the tuning of the control parameters will also have some systematic approach. So these systematic approach for the PID control tuning have, have been uh, very much studied and, uh, and that's what we have uh, looked into. Uh, the entire emphasis here was to simplify the system, whether it's a MIMO system, whether it's a large scale system, try reducing it, uh, what is needed and try um, looking into what the control objective uh, to be set for. In order to control these simplified models, we looked into control structures, we understood the difference between feed forward and the feedback controls, control part, what is possible with feedback control and what is possible with feed, feed forward control, under what conditions we need feed forward, uh, under what conditions we need feedback or what uh, can we, can we, can we, uh, does any point of time the control objective needs both the control techniques, feed forward as well as feedback. We emphasized all the model reduction methods to be looked into or simplification, simplified methods, um, approximate methods for simplifying the uh, higher order systems. We looked into um, considering reducing it to a first order or a second order system because most of the times these system have their dominant behavior as first order and a second order system. And that's what we said that if I have um, these first order and second order systems, so then PID control is a very good choice. Of course, the PID control methods will not satisfy all kinds of control objectives. So we know now that PID control will be able to do to satisfy these kinds of control objectives given this kind of a system. And that's why um, we should first try giving, uh, giving a uh, control methodology as PID. We looked into PID tuning methods. These tuning methods could be based on classical tunings like ziegler nichols cohen gul methods and so on. Uh, the newer techniques which are learning based methods where I am unable to find the input output relationship or the model representation of a system is unknown or, or it is a very, very complex um, behavior that it is having that I am unable to represent in the form of the mathematical equations. The physics of the system is tough to understand 
So then we will resort to these data driven methods where I will have certain observations and based on which we will provide the actions on it. Okay, so in the entire journey, the, uh, the idea is very clear that we will be able to apply PID control if we know whether PID control will be beneficial for certain cases. And those cases we have identified that okay, these kinds of control objectives can be satisfied, but not all, right? So in certain, certain applications, certain control applications, instead of making very, very tough or difficult control objectives or multiple control objectives to be set, we can always, uh, the practical world is not so difficult and we can always simplify those control objectives by prioritizing it. Now when we are prioritizing it, we will be able to then say, okay, these prioritized control objectives, am I able to solve it with the help of PID control is what the, um, the idea uh, being pursued in these four weeks. At the same time, uh, presenting the problem such that PID control method is going to be beneficial or we are able to simplify the, um, the control objectives being set. One great example that we took is about this inverted pendulum on the cart and then we represented um, the reward function such that my theta is equal to, um, if the, the inverted pendulum comes to the theta equal to zero position. But while forming the reward function, we had to consider reward equals minus theta upon pi minus one whole square. And few other terms were also there, theta dot related and then tau related terms were also there. So in this case, what we had considered that um, we, we had to consider this particular term within the range minus one and plus one, all right? So when we had to consider this particular range, it was a good idea to consider uh, making the mapping of theta equal to zero to theta equal to pi. So one can always consider that if this is my card and my upright position is this, I represent instead of uh, this axis, I represent my system with respect to the vertical down, which is like theta representation is now theta equal to zero here and theta equal to pi here. So then the theta values are between minus pi by two to plus pi by two, but at the same time it is in this range instead of this range, all right? Right, so the representation normalization that makes the, um, the idea of running the PID control or a simpler form of um, controls um, working in the practical environment. I hope you enjoyed the course. Thank you.